Ladies and gentlemen, the Gravestones Review. It's been a long time coming, but this, this was something I could not rush, especially when Tom McDonald turned this from a small battle into a war. A year and a half ago, I uploaded my video reviewing Tom's Ghost Stories album, and he tried to strike me down and take the video off of YouTube forever. Luckily, the YouTube gods were on my side and the video survived, but I wouldn't take this lying down. So once again, I paid $40 for another two Tom McDonald albums because everyone knows the most important step in winning a war is financially supporting your opponent, and I'm here to listen to the second one with you guys, track by track, and give my thoughts on each and every one. And I'm gonna be doing it from Tom's birthplace, the land of maple syrup and cheap Tim Hortons drinks, Canada. To really get inside the mind of my enemy, to beat your foe, you must first understand them, or whatever the Art of War says about that. Part two of the White Boy trilogy, I'm ready. One thing is for sure, whether this album is bad, decent, or hell, even if it's great, for his attempts to take me down, Tom, Tom McDonald must, must be stopped. But first, ooh, ooh, got my second dose of the vaccine yesterday. I, I, I can't move that rapidly without feeling pain. But first, I want to thank Karma for sponsoring today's video. If you don't already know about it, Karma is a Chrome extension and app that makes sure that you get the best price for whatever it is that you're buying by making sure that you never miss a price drop or coupon code. As someone who likes to buy a lot of stuff online, from clothes, to physical releases of music, to new equipment for my videos, Karma is really helpful for saving the things that I know I'm going to want to buy in the future, such as both of these glorious new Tom McDonald CDs, and saving them so that I can get notified in the future if there is a drop in the price. To get started with it, all you have to do is download the extension from the Google Chrome store, then you can visit your favourite store, whatever that may be, and click the Karma button on the side there to save the item you're interested in. Then once it's saved, you can get email or push notifications on the Karma app to let you know when the item you've saved either goes on sale or when there's a relevant coupon code for it. Here's one of my lists on Karma for music related items, and the great thing is, you can organise everything you save into different wish lists to make it easier to keep track of everything you've got your eye on. And remember, if you have the Karma Chrome extension specifically, you can use that at checkout to scan for coupon codes and make sure that you're getting the best price for what it is that you're buying. On top of all that, with Karma Gives, Karma gives cash back to you and a cause of your choice when you shop from select retail partners. So, if you guys are ready to start saving money with Karma and getting your wish lists built up, head to my link down in the description below and you can download the free Karma Chrome extension today. Much love to Karma for sponsoring today's video. People are constantly asking me if they can play my music on Twitch or if they can play it on their... Uh, on, in their videos or whatever and like if you want to play the music on twitch or something then you have to um provide some proof that you have permission so just take this as permission if you have a twitch stream or you want to use my music in one of your videos or something this is your permission go ahead and use the music unless you use clips of your music to criticize it right tom first before we talk about any of the tracks on the album Let's take a little look at that copyright strike attempt, shall we? My 47 minute long video reviewing Tom's Ghost Stories album was posted on December 9th, 2019, and just three days later, I got an email from YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, I, I say that like the stereotypical British way. Copyright takedown request received for your YouTube video. Not a copyright claim, a copyright takedown request, a whole ass strike. I clicked the link provided in the email straight away and sure enough, it took me to my ghost stories video so I knew straight away that this was Tom McDonald trying to get rid of it. In all the years that I've been making YouTube videos, I had never received an email like this before so you can bet that when I saw it, I was very close to shitting myself. Until I actually read the first two sentences. Hello. We received the copyright infringement notification below regarding your video. We believe your content is protected by fair use, fair dealing, or a similar exception to copyright protection. We are writing to let you know we do not plan to remove your videos at this time. 
Whew. Crisis averted. YouTube actually took my side on this one straight away. I didn't even have to do anything. But that is not even the fun part. Tom McDonald's reasoning for the copyright strike is attached to this email for me to read in all its glory. Hi. These songs are not available online anywhere, so he is capitalizing off of the fact. I mean, in essence, yes, he, he, he's not necessarily wrong with that. One of the reasons that video was so appealing was because most of the people watching the video hadn't heard the album, so there was an element of mystery there. But as far as I know, me making that video isn't a breach of your copyright just because that music isn't on streaming services. It's still publicly released. It's not like it's a private leak that I stole from you and then reviewed. It can still be reviewed under fair use. You have to purchase my album to hear most of it. Only eight out of the 21 songs are released. I counted at the time I received this email and 10 out of the 21 songs have been released. So not even that is right, Tom. Additionally, the title of the video is I bought Tom McDonald's album so you don't have to. Its purpose is to impact my sales negatively. Now, fair enough, it might look that way, if you aren't familiar with YouTube, despite it being pretty much your main platform, literally just search up I bought blank so you don't have to and millions of videos will pop up for a bunch of different things. It's just a pretty generic YouTuber title that I used for that video because I thought it was very fitting for an album that you have to buy to hear it. Hell, in the intro, I even said that the link to your store is in the description of my video and I did put it there. For anyone that wants to buy the CD, even after hearing what I had to say, about it. And I think I even got a comment from someone saying that they actually did buy it after watching my review despite what I had to say. Not to mention the review is slanderous and inaccurate. Please remove. Thanks, Thomas. Slanderous and inaccurate. First of all, that's pretty subjective. It was entirely accurate to my opinion of the album. And second of all, that is not relevant at all to a copyright strike. But that's very interesting to me because I think that shows the real reason for this copyright strike attempt. He disagreed with my review and didn't like what I had to say and in an ironic twist in the Tom McDonald lore, he wanted to silence my criticism and have it removed. Doesn't a lot of your music talk about being against censorship and stuff like that? Also, despite publicly saying that it's cool to use your songs in videos. Another lovely display of hypocrisy from Thomas McDonald. Can you guys drop a slanderous and inaccurate in the comments, please? Thank God YouTube just basically replied with, learn how fair use works, my guy. Better luck next time, Tom. I just want to be a legend while I'm still alive. It seems like hella rappers go on platinum when they die. It's gravestones. You know, for someone who claimed on the album before this to be the most controversial rapper alive on the opening track, the Gravestones one in comparison starts off pretty modest. Gravestones is a fairly mellow intro with Tom talking about his success up to this point and the sacrifices that it takes to get there. And I honestly believe him when he says that he's sold 100,000 records on this song. If you've ever interacted with a Tom McDonald fan, you'll know they're buying the albums. And that number is impressive as an independent artist. I'm very honored to be a part of that 100,000 Mr. McDonald. He also mentions that since he started to succeed in music, he lost a lot of friendships. I can't imagine why. This one is just a more personal side of Tom, more closer to who he truly is. Because as I'm gonna touch on throughout this review a little bit, I fully believe that to a certain extent, Tom is playing a character in his music. It's not the most interesting song. It kind of reminds me of the stuff from the early, early Tom McDonald albums where he didn't sound all that different to every other standard white rapper that exists. But still, I guess it's a decent start to Gravestones. We've been too sensitive. Everyone feels like someone offended him. We invented genders, gave him better benefits than women and men can get. And he's back in form, ladies and gentlemen. There is the most controversial rapper in the world that we all know and love. We've got him dropping lines about his love for slurs, about how much he hates rap music because everyone knows Tom McDonald makes rap for people that don't like rap music, and talking about how sensitive everyone is despite the fact that his ego is just as fragile as everyone else's. Whew, the Tom McDonald checklist is really being ticked off here. And I'm not even gonna lie, 
I prefer this track to the first one, just from a pure entertainment perspective. It's just funny watching the beginning stages of Tom's slow evolution into being completely consumed by his offensive savior of the people persona, to the point that it's almost a self-parody. Sound-wise, the production is hard enough, and it sounds a little more layered than the instrumentals on Flowers for the Dead, which was the companion mixtape that dropped along with this album. And barring what he's saying, plus the fact that it sounds like he's completely ripping Eminem shtick from the early 2000s, we have a hook that does sound pretty slick to me on here. He also does this thing on here that you are going to hear a lot throughout this album. I call it the third verse breakdown. Also, I'm pretty sure that's just commonly referred to as a bridge, but shh. He reaches the last verse in the song, and the instrumental will change up slightly, with Tom spitting his final spiritual miracle verse over it to close the track out with a bang. And it's kind of effective on here. I think what he's saying is silly, but his flow over the simplified version of the beat is nice and fluid. Y'all make me feel like a villain for having opinions. I see it different. Yeah. I think it's funny that y'all get offended. I'm pushing your buttons on purpose, no sympathy given. It's a really, really dumb song in my opinion. But at least I had some fun listening to it. I'm the worst rapper alive and I'm ignoring the facts. I try too hard to be edgy. My bars are garbage. You win. I'm 100% pure grade A Colombian cringe. Yes, Tom. Yes, you are. You know what everybody hates me from the last album? This is basically just part two to that. Three tracks in and it's already struggling to set itself apart from Ghost Stories. It's got that same Macklemore inspired upbeat piano production mixed with similar horns to his song Buttholes from the Ghost Stories album. And it's not really a better beat in any way, it's pretty much a recycle job. But that's not all, it's conceptually the same as well, with America's resident white boy rapping about all the criticisms that people have of him in a tongue-in-cheek manner. Then he brings it all around with the third verse about how people are only critical of him because they're unhappy with their own lives, which is the exact same as the third verse on Everybody Hates Me. The intention with this one is for Tom to mock people who call him corny and sort of brush off those criticisms, but some of the lyrics here are actually hilarious because they're genuinely true. This line I'm about to play you, I have never heard anyone say this about Tom McDonald, but I burst out laughing the first time I heard it because it was so accurate. I'm like Joyner Lucas Corny had a baby with logic. The doctor dropped it on his head and said, that's a Tom McDonald. Honorable mention to the line about him looking like Macklemore's crackhead cousin. The track does display a level of self-awareness, as does the music video which has Tom dancing around in a corn suit, which was pretty funny. Maybe I'll just overlay that on the screen at random points during the video when Tom is being corny. But it does have me a bit concerned that at this point in the album, I know we're not too deep into it, it is just three tracks, but at this point, this project doesn't seem as much of a leap in quality from Ghost Stories as Ghost Stories did from Death Threats, the one before that. And ladies and gentlemen, sound the alarms because we have reached the first awful hook on this album. This one sounds like a school poem by an eight year old. Call me a loser, say I suck. Tell me I'm ugly, well so what? You're so stupid, are you drunk? Say it to my face and I'll kick your butt. It's a fairly lighthearted track. It's not the worst one on here because he did just have some fun with it, but it doesn't really hit the same when we've heard a song exactly like this on an album that just dropped one year before it. A decent song, but not even original by Tom McDonald standards. Yeah, I bought some Gucci, but I hardly even wear it. I was stoked that after 30 years, I finally wasn't broken. I don't like that stuff though. And now we've reached the first track on Gravestones, that I mostly like. The album hasn't necessarily got off to an amazing start, but so far it's at least not seeming like it will be Tom McDonald's worst when it's all said and done. Sellout is all about Tom's fans criticizing him for buying some secondhand Gucci clothes and calling him a sellout for it. It's actually wild how big of a deal Tom McDonald buying a little bit of Gucci seems to be for his fans because this is not the last time that he mentions this topic on here. I'll give five dollars to anyone who can guess what burning my designer is. About. I don't really feel sorry for him because what can you expect when you've come to build a sort of 
anti-hip-hop fan base and that's intentionally what you've built. But for what it's worth, he does a decent job explaining to the people that were mad why he doesn't feel like he sold out for this one harmless decision. It doesn't go too deep into what I'm about to mention, but it takes a decent look at having a fan base enabling people to tell you what your values are, as if they fully know you as a person. But he also makes it clear that he doesn't feel his fan base is fully in the wrong for trying to keep him in line with the values that that he has displayed in his music before. It does come off as quite melodramatic, considering the inspiration for this song was literally Tom buying clothes. He even goes as far as promising to burn them on here. I mean, I think giving them away would probably be a better option for everybody and, you know, just the environment, but yeah, go ahead, burn them for a nice grand dramatic gesture. But hey, it's fairly good and it has a nice sound to it. Nice verses, nice chorus, nice enough beat even if it is a little plain. I think sellout worked for what it was going for. I like Wu Tang, but that vibe is kinda old and grimy. Not a conscious rapper, autos rappers sound like SJ Dubs. Oh, look at this conveniently placed track to remind me why I don't feel sorry for Tom for the anti hip hop audience that he's built. Tom, you cannot be upset that people call you a culture vulture when you make music within the hip hop genre, have made a pretty sizable profit off of it, and then make this song where you pretty much put down every other subgenre and call the culture, and I quote, cancer. Also, it's kind of funny that on a rap song called I Hate Hip Hop, the way that he raps on it instantly reminded me of Tech 9 especially in the chorus. Ironic, considering he has a line on here where he says, I'm not horrorcore, I don't paint my face. This song is just what you expect from the title, there's not much to it. Here's what these other rappers are, here's why I'm different and better than them. Standard Tom McDonald fare. There's another third verse breakdown on this track, and once again, it is pretty hard. Content aside, I love the sort of Yeezus style synth that the stripped down portion of the beat focuses on, and then there's that part where it just all explodes back in about halfway through the verse, with the horns just kicking the energy right back up. The pitch down doubling of Tom's vocals in the background of the verse too did add to the intensity of it, even if overall that whole demonic voice effect is really overdone by Tom. I swear that it's just like a white rapper staple, like, oh, I'm gonna have this demonic voice, like, either as the main vocal or the background effect. <laughs> I've never done that. I've never done that before. This one's mainly worth listening to just for the beat for me. As with most Tom beats, it does sound like it's mostly made up of preset loops without much alteration, as I mentioned in my Flowers for the Dead review, but the instruments all come together to make a pretty heavy, intense instrumental. From a content perspective, it's an incredibly boring and predictable track just from its title. He didn't do anything exciting with the concept, but it has its moments with the production in Tom's flow. I'm fighting monsters in my head. I'm lighting all my cigarettes. I'm sliding every time there's threat. This is another one that's funny to me because in the previous song, Tom made a point to say that he is not an emo rapper. But then this song sounds just like something that a mainstream emo rapper would make, mixed with a little bit of country rap in there, or just country music. This doesn't really sound like Tom McDonald on this track, which I guess isn't necessarily a bad thing. Genuinely, sometimes I'll just be going about my day and some parts of this song will play in my head because admittedly, it does have some catchy segments and I'll spend so long trying to figure out what Juice World song it is that's playing in my head. And then I remember it's not a Juice song, Song. It is in fact I Cannot Be Nice by Tom McDonald. This song feels really out of place on this album, but like I said, it does have its catchy moments. It's just that the main thing that I think about when I'm listening to it is how weird it sounds coming from Tom. Lyrically, it's not very interesting either. It's one that's a lot more vague and non-specific with its lyrics, so there's not much that's entertaining to look at in that department too. Outside of a bit of catchiness, it's not a very memorable one. If I identify as a female, then when my balls and penis disappear, children want a gender switch and hating men is feminist. He's back at it again, the most controversial rapper in the world. He says the things that your faves won't. He is free speech personified. 
Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we essentially just have pissed the world off part two here. Just remove the entertainment value. Wow, Tom making intentionally controversial political tracks is getting old already on this 2020 album of his. I sure hope that he doesn't drag this out and make it an even bigger part of his brand in 2021. For a song called People So Stupid, it really has some brain dead bars. Oh my god, this is about to be fun. Every dude who touched a boob or a booty getting me tooed, what you expect from the kids who went to Hooters after school? What is the point you're even trying to make here? Oh wait, Tom McDonald fans, don't look, don't look. I have a Gucci phone case. It is fake, it is fake, and it cost me about 20 quid instead of 400, but shield your eyes. I don't want you to force me to burn this. And now it's trendy to be triggered and pretend you're a victim. It's my race, it's my way, it's because I'm a Christian. I hate the internet and anyone who has an opinion. That first part, just take out the it's my way, it's because I'm a Christian part. Does that sound like anyone you know? The hatred for Caucasians is so fucking pathetic. Go be proud that you're black, but don't hate me for some credit. But hating straight men, white folks, and Christians is common. If you're white, then you're privileged, guilty by association. If I was black, then would have said that all my lyrics were conscious. But I'm white, so they're labeled ignorant and obnoxious. Oh, so this part of the line is said to sarcastically mock people, but you clearly weren't the biggest fan of my opinion on the internet when you tried to copyright strike me. Let's talk about abortion. Sorry, tell me how this works. Bacteria is life on Mars, but a heartbeat isn't life on Earth? There is so many points you could make to respond to this line, but let me just go with one of the simpler ones, that it's not a debate about what constitutes life, it's a debate over whether or not women should have the choice to bring a child into this world. Not to mention, all of us kill bacteria every single day without a second thought, so if that's your argument for why a fetus should live, it's not a very strong one. That one line is actually very symbolic of a lot of Tom's lyrics. Remove all the nuance and complexity from an argument for the sake of a line that sounds quotable and deep to people that like it. But for people who aren't fans of the music, it's very clear how transparent and idiotic that line is. Like, come on, surely even for people who are pro-life, that's a shit line. Call me homophobic because I don't want to date guys? k tight. Call me an owl because who, who, who the fuck is saying this? Who is calling you homophobic purely because you're not gay yourself? And finally, the third verse breakdown, yep, there's another one. It paints this picture that people nowadays are only fake social media activists slash complainers, when that really isn't the case. People in our generation are taking action just as much as before, if not even more, but you're purposefully ignoring that for the sake of trying to make a really condescending point. No matter what the topic of the song is, Tom always seems to either be praising himself or putting other people down. He can't just give an objective view of something. As someone who's kept up with Tom's music for a while, I know that it's extremely likely that he's intentionally just saying this stuff purely to push people's buttons, but he's the one looking stupid in the process. The fact that he delivers it all in a mocking, I'm right, you're wrong tone makes all the dumb stuff he's saying just even more embarrassing. Then what makes this song even worse is his incredibly grating nasally delivery in the second verse, hands down. The worst song on the project so far. Nothing else has topped this yet. It's a tough one to talk about. It just flooded my body with secondhand embarrassment. Once upon a time, I told my mom about a passion. I'm not going to college, I'm gonna be a white rapper. Thoughts become words and words become actions. Let me read you one of the things I wrote about this song in my notes that I took while listening to the album. What the fuck is this nursery ass beat? We've got that bright sounding piano, those happy clappy ass drums. This song would be bussing at the Macklemore Soundalike convention. Also, if you've watched my Ghost Stories review, or if you're one of the unfortunate few who has actually heard the album, then you might have noticed that this track is somewhat similar to I Wish, which was also track 8 on that album. Just like that, this one is a more sentimental, piano-based track. The difference is that this one is much more upbeat than I Wish was, but it very much feels like the same type of track. Now, while I think the sound of the track leaves a lot to be desired with the beat and the, the singing on the hook. We all have dreams that no one believes in. Make me feel bad, I'll knock your teeth in. The content and the message of the track is 
actually really positive. It's all about not forgetting your dreams and growing old living a life that you feel is unfulfilling by putting the life that you envisioned for yourself when you were younger on the back burner to go down a more traditional route in life. Hell, if I gave up and didn't follow my dream to be a YouTuber like all the people that I watched for entertainment growing up, then I wouldn't be here doing what I love and talking about this album. So it's a message that I believe in too. Tom probably wishes I didn't follow my dreams considering the strike attempt, but that's neither here nor there. I don't think that everyone who goes to school and gets a more traditional type of job is gonna live a life that's unfulfilling like this song kind of suggests, but I do agree with the idea of never throwing away your goals or feeling like they're unachievable. You can do it. CDTV said so, and Tom McDonald. Look, two white boys coming together. They said two white boys cannot coexist. It's a song I'll very rarely listen to because like I said, I don't think it sounds all that great, but as far as what he's saying, I think it's something that could really inspire his listeners. And I think that's not a bad thing. Look at all the rappers that the game's killed. Record labels making billions. Why can't artists even pay bills? You get taken advantage of if you take deals. The music industry is a song that I mentioned previously in my Flowers for the Dead review because the verses are almost word for word the same as a song from that project called Fuck the Industry. They're just shorter on this one. The only big differences between the songs are the choruses and the instrumentals. Fuck the industry. Claim they want to help, but they the enemy. Labels trying to drain you of your energy. Man, fuck the industry. And you can keep your cash. I'm not that broke. I won't sign no contracts. I do me. It kind of makes each track lose their value a little bit because neither of them feel unique once you've heard both. However, some of the content is definitely strong and relevant as ever, with Tom talking about how exploitative and seedy major labels are. Not without bringing up the Illuminati and Satan worshipping record label executives, of course, but I think the message of major labels being pretty predatory is a very true one. As another small plus, the beat and the chorus are much better on this one than Fuck the Industry. I particularly love those twinkling bell sounds during the chorus and the way he doubles up his vocals at the end of each line with some autotune vocals. So it's a better overall track, even though the copy pasting was a strange decision to me. Also, another third verse beat breakdown slash mini switch on this one. Don't expect to see anything super exciting in terms of song structuring in here. They're pretty much all structured the same way, but it sounds nice here again, so I'll give it one more pass. But come on, Tom, if you're so different from all these other rappers, can we get something just a little bit more exciting than verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus? No, we can't? Okay. Overall, probably the best song we've had since Sellout, I'd say. Hopefully it doesn't take another four songs to hear the next good one, but let's see. These days you're promoting that it's fun to be an addict, so I'm asking, how could y'all write that, bruh? Well, this certainly won't be the next good song. This track is a dumpster fire on roller skates. You can blame the rappers that you blow up, but your favorite songs are about doing drugs. Man, this one is something special. To put it simply, this song puts way too much responsibility on rap music for causing the world's problems. If you look at the hook, not only does it blame the rappers who make the music about doing drugs and shooting guns, but also blames the listeners who choose to listen to this music that supposedly, and I quote, makes you dumb. So what happens after these kids grow up? And who's to blame for what they've become? It's it's a song that ignores all other factors and issues in society that push people towards drug use, objectifying women, spending a little bit of extra money on shoes, and instead chooses to single out rap music as the biggest cause. At the end of the day, it is just another example of Tom McDonald's moral grandstanding because the underlying message of the song, not too deep underneath the surface, is you should blame these rappers, but not me because my music is not destroying society like theirs is. The version of this song that dropped before this album featured the rapper that used to be a janitor, but he doesn't appear on the album version for whatever reason. Not only is this one just a really bad sounding song, but it's really pointing fingers at the wrong thing. <laughs> After that one, I just, I need to take a break. I can't continue listening to this album right now without having something in the middle to just 
take my mind off it. And I'm sure it's a break that you guys could use as well before we dive back into the cornfields for some more Tom. Because for this segment of the video, we're going to have a little game show that I'm going to have a special guest on for. And this special guest is a 100% real, authentic, genuine Tom McDonald stan and definitely not just playing a part for the sake of the skit. It's not a skit. It's, it's, it's a real game show. So without further ado, let's take a little break from Gravestones together and jump into the Tom McDonald lyric game show. The first of its kind, hosted by me, CDTV Productions. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, for this next segment of the video, we've got we've got a special guest here, um, a, a Tom McDonald stand. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, to any uh, Tom McDonald people watching this, he told me ahead of time. He said, "I'm doing this video that's like this whole documentary about Tom McDonald and how much his music means to me." He better not be bamboozling me here because I am a huge no. Tom McDonald stand. I know all these snowflakes like they don't they don't like want to accept Tom McDonald. So I'm really hoping that you're not trying to set me up for some commie gobbledygook here. Oh, I would never do that. I would never do that. I thought it would be fun to, to have this part in the middle where we have a little game show. And the game show is going to be Tom or not Tom, unless you've got a better name for it. Uh, Tom McDonald or Tom McDonough. There we go. See, I knew you were the right person for the job. Okay, this is this is I don't perfect. Know. That was not good. I've got 15 lyrics right here, and I'm gonna read them yeah. out to you, and you just have to guess if they are Tom McDonald lyrics or if they aren't. Okay, sounds good. And there's a prize on the line here too. There is a What's prize. What's the prize? <laughs> if you guess 10 out of the 15 lyrics correctly, just 10 out of 15, you get a signed copy of Tom McDonald's Gravestones oh, album. Oh shit. My grandma and I were actually trying to get our hands on one of those a couple months back, I think. Oh, and they were man. all sold out. This could be your chance and and you can you could listen to it together. Let's start with uh, with lyric number 1. Are you ready? I'm ready. It's so obvious they're taunting us with Lil Uzi Vert. Say it slow. Sound it out. Lil Lucifer. You you think that you think I'm not a Tom McDonald stan? This is, we're starting off You think off I'm not going to recognize that that's one of the most iconic Tom McDonald lyrics? Come on, bro. Come on. That's that one's actually pretty clever. Lil Lucy Fur. Oh, and you know the theory? This was back in the day. There was like a whole meme about this, but it's Lil Uzi's vertical. He's pointing it at the sky. Who lives in the sky? He's pointing it at God. That's, that one actually might have, have a lot of weight to it. I'm not going to lie. That's definitely a theory. All right, on yeah. to the next one. <laughs> they call me redneck, white trash, say you're bad. I don't care, kiss my ass. I don't care, kiss my ass. Hmm. Okay, this one, it sounds like if somebody was trying to make fun of Tom McDonald, something mm. that they would write. So, so I'm going to say it's not real. You are correct on this one again. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. that's too it's too on the nose i don't think like, it's a little too on the nose for me that was a lyric from the rapper adam calhoun on the song creatively titled racism oh wow he called it racism <laughs> and then that's exactly what the song was lyric number three feminism's definition to men is that we are evil why aren't women evil too you said that we're equal oh this one's Oof. this one's got to be tom i'm gonna say it's tom <laughs> mcdonald You've got it again, man. You've got yeah, it again. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. three for three so far. That's Tom McDonald on the song Feminuts. I right. could hear that. I could hear his voice on that, you know? Oh, dude, if I get 15 out of 15, is that is that good? And all the asses in their videos are clever distractions. Keep your eyes on the woman and you forget about the rapper. The music fucking trash, but the booties get fatter. And that's a substitute for having actual talent. It definitely sounds like Tom McDonald. I'm going to say it is Tom McDonald. You're doing that's, good. That's, that's correct. correct. That's correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I wish we could get Wi-Fi signals from a tree. Then everyone would plant them and we'd probably save the planet for free. Too bad we only need them to breathe. Not Tom McDonald. That one is Tom McDonald. No! That's your first one wrong. Your first God one wrong. God damn it, dude. That was a bit of a tougher one. You know, there wasn't any mentions of him being white in there. Number six, we've got a, we've got a real challenge in one here. Real hip hop, don't you ever forget it. It's that underground shit. It's the white boy that said it. 
that would be uh, George Miller. I knew I Frank. knew I couldn't get Joji. that one past you. I couldn't get that Bro, one past I na- you. When I was uh, 17, I named my album Bad Internet Rapper, which is the title of that video. So yeah, you're not going to get me with that one. Bonus points for the name of the, the artist. It's politics with a Z. Oh, the spelling and everything. Give some... me a point back. Give me that one for the trees back. You know what? You get that. You get that. We're <laughs> six for six. There we go. There we go. Number seven. Is this V-neck too low? People in the comments, I think I got to throw this shirt away. It's not me. I feel like as a Tom McDonough stan, I, I feel like you should be wearing like a like a tank top, a white tank top. If money is the root of all evil, then how come we all want to be rich? If life is so good for white people, then how come our life's still a bitch? I'm going to say it's Tom McDonald. That lyric is not Tom. Ah. This time it is actually from a rapper called Mises. Like Jesus, but me Zeus. Even the song you title, got me. that was Mises on White Devil. Wow. I'm a rapper and an activist. Fuck it, I'm a raptivist. No way this is Tom McDonald, no way. Yeah, that one wasn't even Tom. I, the- did, I just chose it because it's so <laughs> hilariously bad. That lyric was, again, by Mises on black Damn. and white. You might be noticing wow. a bit of a theme. I'm about to stir up the pot. I'm gonna talk about what they don't want me to say. This division of race is a spit in the face of America, look at how far we done came. Oh, what a shame. How does the media fill us with hate? How do you feel like it's racist for someone to say that they're keeping America great? All right, that's Tom McDonald. That's Tom, has to be. Incorrect. No way, if, if that's incorrect, it's just a straight rip off of the other song that, you know the song I'm talking about? No Lives Matter, is it that one? Mm, yeah, that's that, that was by the rapper, his name is Burden on the song White oh. Privilege. Oh my God, why does every song you have, have the white person in the title? Look, Maybe I was... need to start doing that in my songs, bro. <laughs> I knew what uh, Frank Ocean was doing when he made that song White Ferrari. He was just trying to get all the Tom McDonald stands. White Ferrari. White privilege isn't even real to me. Like that's like what the song is. Yo, I've got a great idea for you, by the way. I've got a great idea. You could do like yes. a From Me To You white remix album. You could make each song <laughs> political. Candles on fire, you could have America's on fire. Shades of Us, you could keep that the same. That's off the top. That's Everybody off the top. subscribe to this guy, unless this video is anti Tom McDonald, in which case unsubscribe. Shout out my Trump fans. They're treated as criminals. Because the internet's primarily controlled by the liberals. We get one perspective, the rest neglected, suppress expression, we're not respected, don't get represented. What, this is, th- that's from my album. What, what, what song no, was uh, that? What song was that? It's, it's Sisyphus. <laughs> I'm gonna say that it's not Tom McDonald. And the reason mm. that I'm gonna say that is because I feel like he wouldn't say we when mm. referring to Trump supporters because I feel like he doesn't like to explicitly align himself. Okay, I like the reason in there, but that's Am I wrong? incorrect. No way. <laughs> that one is Tom McDonald. It's actually from this album. Oh my God, I fell off in the middle of this it's, fucking it's, game. All right, we've got five left. You need to get right. three of these correct. Okay, okay, okay. The feminists who started the movement would be ashamed of so many things. They fought so you could vote, not show your butthole on OnlyFans. It's Tom McDonald. It is. That is Tom McDonald. Let's go. He does like a little bit of humor like that. This one, it's gonna be one hell of a challenge. Yeah, I come fast, but this music gonna last long. Um. J. Cole. So your answer is not Tom? Oh yeah, my answer is not Tom. <laughs> You're correct on that one. It was not Tom. It was okay. in fact Quadeca on these days. All right, that's what I thought. There's only two genders. I know that's offensive. Abortion is murder. I thought I should mention. I'm just gonna go with my gun saying not Tom McDonald. Well, going with your gut instinct might surprise you Quadeca because that is your 10th lyric, correct? You oh, have won. Let's go. You've won our grand prize. Wow. The Gravestones wow. Sane CD. There you go. You, you and your grandma. Put a round of applause sound effect. You've done it. You can give that to your grandma. Maybe this Christmas. 
get the whole family fire, together fire. and um show them what they've been missing out on thank you so much that is from the rapper called bryson gray on the song all american i had to uh <laughs> dive down some rabbit holes to find this man bro you're probably on some fucking watch list <laughs> now he has albums such as maga season and um maga christmas which is a fun one for the festive season. Looking at the lyrics here, it's, it's everything you want from a Christmas album. Brace them, what you want for Christmas. I want an AR-15. <laughs> <laughs> I want to find out who killed Jeffrey Epstein. Oh shit, wow. this is fire. I might have to check this guy out actually. Honestly, he's topped Mariah's All I Want for Christmas right there. So these next two, these next two are pretty much just bonus rounds because you've already won our grand prize. So let's keep it going. These, I'm trying to get the most points possible. You're lucky mama taught me don't be hitting a woman. But if I did, you would deserve it. Probably go to jail. It, it'd be worth it. It sounds like M an Eminem lyric, like a Slim Shady bar. Yeah, yeah. I know that Tom McDonald really likes Eminem. What's it doesn't sound one? like anything I've heard of Tom McDonald. Mm. But just based on probabilities of guessing games that I'm going. Oh, you know, okay, okay. In my head, I'm going to say it's Tom McDonald. You uh, are... No, no, it's not Tom McDonald. Ooh. No, it is. Which it one? Is. Which it one? Is. We gotta get a final answer here. <laughs> a final answer. My gut says no, but I'm just gonna say it is Tom McDonald. That one is Tom McDonald. Wow. That's Tom McDonald on the song Hitting a Woman. He has a song called Hitting a Woman? Dude, what's going on right now? On to the final, the 15th and final one. This is just for the bragging rights. Every day is a new crisis. First, it was slavery. Then it was ISIS. Then it was Trump and a virus and riots. And now our worst enemy is fighting the whiteness. Oh, it is, it's Tom McDonald. That final one, I'm happy to tell you that you got it correct. There, there we, go. we there go. go, there we go. Closing it out with 12 out of 15 correct. That's pretty good. How do you feel about your performance on the the Tom McDonald or Tom McTon Mc, McDon Don't game show? I think I I'm, I think I did pretty well. I would challenge anybody to do better than me. I feel like they could. Oh, well there you go. If huh? anybody in that's watching this did better than me, let me know in the comments. All right. Well, as the first and only contestant that we've had on here, I can I can definitely say that you've been the best one so far. Any last words you want to say to the people watching? I would like to say that. Uh... Oh God. I know it's, a, it's an emotional moment. It's an emotional moment. Um. What's going on, guys? What's going on? All right, can we be serious right now? What what is this? All right, what 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 are we doing here? Is this it? Is this is this what you want? Take a second, think about it. Stop. Get off. Get off of whatever you're 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 watching or whatever. Close this computer. Fuck the retention time. Fuck like getting all whoa, angry, whoa, whoa. And writing an angry comment. Go outside. Breathe breathe in the air. I don't know. It's I don't know why I came on this video. Why did? What am I getting out of this? Other than exhaustion and existential crisis and a deeply uh, saddening reality of, of my state of being a stan of Tom McDonald. I didn't like this. I didn't like this at all. Cut, cut all of this out. Cut all of this out. Now let's hold up. Let's hold up. There's one thing you need to think about here. Thing about of this in this. There is one thing you get out of this, other than all the all the doom and gloom. You get a happy grandma. And I think. That Trump I lied thing. about that. I lied. Oh. She, she doesn't know who Tom McDonald You think she knows who Tom McDonald is? She doesn't know who that is. I was lying to make everybody like me. I wanted to come on your channel and have everybody be like, oh, this guy's so funny. He's so likable. Oh, whatever. <sighs> you know what? And, and, I, and I think that's, whoa, whoa. I'm sorry, man. Good luck with the video. Sorry. I can't, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do it. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Well, I guess we've had our fun for the day. Let's jump back into the album, shall we? It's a
old place Work to death till the loans pay You drive to work and punch the clock And break your back for a low wage Weekends full of cocaine Ooh, we got a little bit of country Tom McDonald on this one I ain't fast like a speeding bullet I ain't strong like a hurricane me mentioning bad vocals by Tom is probably getting a little bit repetitive at this point, but there are some bridges and choruses that just have to be mentioned. They can lock me up, they can beat me down, they can take my truck, they can take my house. Tom's flows during the verses of Just a Man are quick and they are pretty slick, but I found myself losing interest in it pretty fast. It's a double-edged sword because Tom says a lot of ridiculous things when he's playing up to his edgiest rapper in the world persona to the point that it's almost annoying. But then on the other hand, when he's not doing that, he's not really that entertaining to listen to. Just a Man is a pretty dull affair with a funny bridge and chorus. It's a harmless song to be fair, but that's all I have to say about it. Can't wait till you congratulate me. This gonna be my biggest year. I love it when the smile is fake. I see the pain from ear to ear. This was another one that was reminiscent of ghost stories to me, reminding me of Ashes to Ashes being another more rock influenced track. I don't want to say this album is the exact same as Ghost Stories, for one, it's actually not as good, but it does seem like Tom molded it off of a pretty similar template. But wait a second, could it be? We actually have a good hook, ladies and gentlemen. I actually really like how this one sounds. It's as anthemic as it should be for a track like this. If I can actually get pumped up to a Tom McDonald hook, then it's a good hook. Don't get me wrong, the track does still have some funny singing moments. For example, I would love to hear the acapella of like the high-pitched backing vocal that Tom does for these lyrics. The road that I walk is loaded with bombs, come get it. The bridges I cross are gone and I don't regret it. But for the most part, this track succeeds in terms of Tom's voice. It's probably another one of my favorites. So Icon is a nice little track. Not gonna go out of my way to listen to it in my free time, but I can appreciate it as better than most of this project so far. I swear that cancer has a cure, but they're refusing to make it. They've done like 40 years of research, 90 billion in donations. Now this song. This is an interesting one. From the title alone, I thought it would be a very emotional track. And as someone who has lost the first degree family member to cancer, I, I didn't think it would be one that I ended up in disagreement with. But unfortunately, I did for at least half of it. Because while the hook of the song does have a nice empowering message, it doesn't sound great, but the message is nice so it gets a pass. And the second verse is pretty strong. Too much of the first verse focuses on the cancer has a cure but Big Pharma is hiding it conspiracy. The song isn't fully focused on how awful of an illness cancer is, like there are parts of it that definitely get that message across, but it doesn't fully focus on that and that kind of bugs me honestly. Like I said, I agree with the second verse where he talks about how carcinogenic the world is so things aren't exactly in our favor when it comes to cancer and how scary the idea of it can be. But personally, I just don't believe that the government has a cure for cancer that they are hiding. First of all, cancer is not one disease. It's the name for a group of hundreds of unique diseases. So as far as I know, there can't be a catch-all cure for cancer. I think if you have a simple understanding of what cancer is and how it works and how many different types of it there is, that right there tells you why it is such a hard illness for us to get rid of. I just wish that this song focused more on F cancer than F this ambiguous group of evil people that I'll just refer to as they. I know a lot of people do actually buy the theory that it has some sort of hidden cure, but I personally don't believe that that makes any logical sense if you just look into it a little bit or understand the disease that is cancer. Or the sheer number of people that would have to stay silent for that cure to be kept a secret. And I think this whole suppressed cure for cancer idea comes from people trying to rationalize a group of diseases that are so awful and quite frankly scary to think about. The production sounds nice on it though and there's lines here and there that do focus on the human side of cancer and how scary it can be. So 
There's a couple little positives for you guys before we move on to the next one. Okay, I chased a dollar and I blew a buck. I got the Fendi hats, I got the Louboutins, I got the St. Laurent's, I got the Gucci ones. It didn't make me cool, it made me stupid dumb. Ah, here we go. Back to a bit of a lighter topic. Let's revisit the tale of Tom McDonald's Gucci drip. I'm burning my designer, I'm lighting it on fire. Goodbye to the Gucci, Louis Prada, Versace, Balenciaga. I swear I'm starting to feel like Tom McDonald bought some designer clothes just so he could make these tracks. When you're buried in that Gucci graveyard, it won't matter what you bought before, cause you ain't leaving with the things you paid for, they'll be hanging up in vintage stores. When you're laying in that Louis coffin, it won't matter what you spent alive, cause you ain't leaving with the things you paid for, they'll be second hand for half the price. Okay, Tom, but did you consider that Drip is forever? This song doesn't even sound that bad, but I just think it's really funny that he has more than one song dedicated to this topic on here. This is top three funniest songs on the project so far with how seriously it takes itself. If you don't laugh when you hear that hook and how dramatic and over the top it is, then, then you have no soul, my friend. Burning my designer, I'm lighting it on fire. I promise you, it's really not that big of a deal if you caved in and went and bought some designer and then went on to realize that it doesn't really align with your personal values later down the line. You know, by this point in the album, something is really starting to strike me. Where is the great flow switches that some of the tracks on Ghost Stories had? So many of the tracks on here, the flows haven't even really stood out to me that much because they're sort of monotonous and don't change up all that much throughout the tracks. Where are the darker tracks that are slightly more experimental with their sound like I Don't Feel Good? Songs with the impact of tracks like I Wish and Side Effects? This album feels so much more watered down and simplistic than that project. I find it crazy to think that that one is good compared to this one, but here we are. Oh, and if you thought that track sounded silly, you are not prepared for the one we have next. I swear these artists worship the devil. You see the symbols in their videos, it's not accidental. They sold their souls to be famous, it's not a debt they can settle. I don't know if you guys had this phase when you were like 13 and you would watch these videos on Illuminati rapper conspiracy theories, but this is basically that in song form. You know those videos that would say Eminem is a clone because his face looks a little bit different after like five years, a drug problem, overcoming that drug problem and a bit of Botox? Tom is almost on that level on here. Research the conspiracy first. <laughs> it's so obvious they're taunting us with Lil Uzi Vert. Say it slow, sound it out. Lil Lucifer. <laughs> Tom, I think we need to talk about when it's time to stop. And of all the bad hooks that exist in Tom McDonald's discography, Satanic Rappers has to be up there with the worst of them. His angry growling on the hook is like a cheese grater on my eardrums. If I get buried, angels will pick up the torch that I carry. They cannot have me. I'd rather see cattle. I wish Tom's vocals weren't so grating on there because holy shit, the production is incredible during that segment. You've got all these dark, dramatic sounds just slapping off of each other. It goes hard as hell. In fact, the beat throughout most of the song bumps, but the stuff that Tom is saying over it is just so ridiculously laughable. There's no way. There's no way he believes all this. Songs like this are why I believe a large percentage of Tom's music is just him playing a character. There is no way that a person is saying these award shows aren't about the music or visuals, they're designed to be identical to satanic rituals with a straight face. But make no mistake, this track is not about warning the listeners. As with a lot of Tom songs that talk about how dark and evil something is, of course the last verse ties it back around to how he is different and he is the beacon of light that you should be supporting and pouring your money into. These artists think it's cool, please forgive them. They know not what they're doing to the fans that they're convincing. Let my music be the exorcism. He is not like these satanic rappers. This man right here is a real angel. This rapper is so brave. He refuses to make good music. Tom makes music for people that lost their shit at the Lil Nas X Call Me By Your Name video. He's found his 
market and will say anything to really solidify his place in their hearts. I think censoring the right wing is the right thing to do because the owners of the platforms have left wing views. I'm not Republican or liberal. I'm searching for the truth. And what have we got? Like four left? Jesus Christ. So this album is becoming a drag by this point. A big focus of this track is how social media supposedly suppresses right wing views. And even as a line about how Trump fans are treated like criminals, when in reality, a recent study found that right wing views are not censored in any way on social media platforms. What they do remove is anything that's hateful, abusive, or falls under misinformation, but those things really don't necessarily equate to right wing views. The study states there is no evidence to support the claim that the major social media companies are suppressing, censoring, or otherwise discriminating against conservatives on their platforms. In fact, it is often conservatives who gain the most in terms of engagement and online attention thanks to the platform's system of algorithmic promotion of content. Hell, a lot of Tom's music and lyrics leans towards the right, some of it just is right wing, and he's performing excellently on social media, so I don't know where this victim complex is coming from. His own music is proof that this song is not true. Should I make the joke about censoring views you don't agree with? Nah, I won't do that. I won't do that. This song is a rallying cry against an issue that doesn't exist, but that's nothing new for Tom to be fair. Overall, it's another pretty dull track. The lack of highlights on this album is really starting to shine through the closer and closer we get to the end of Gravestones. Life is hella short. The party always dies down. When the cops are at your door. With Weirdos, we have the first Tom McDonald song on a solo album of his that actually has a feature, at least since he reinvented his image and became the Tom McDonald that we know and love today. And the feature is from none other than his girlfriend, Nova Rockefeller. Surely the track is gonna be something special to mark this monumental moment. Well, Life is super hard. I see you dealing with it messy. Life is a trip, we don't fall down. Reach for the stars, get to the ground. Oh no! fucking with your weirdo. The vocals leave a lot to be desired. Why does this song exist? Is this Tom showing us what would happen in an alternate dimension if him and Nova went down the route of becoming mumble rappers, as they would say? The auto-tune on this track has fueled my nightmares since I first heard it. I'm still somewhat convinced that is isn't real and my mind made it up. The way Tom sings here really is a callback to his Dream People in the Whiskey Wars days, where he was making terribly auto-tuned music that didn't sound all that different to the mainstream stuff that's out there that he talks so much about disliking now. This is just easily one of the worst songs on the album, not even really anything to giggle at in the lyrics, it's just one that left me confused as to why it was even here on the album. I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. It must be fake. I don't know about you. I don't know is kiss my ass. Middle finger, fuck you. I'm mad. You know what? As far as Tom's sing rapping tracks go, F you is not that bad. I kind of like the lighthearted vibe that it has. I know that these lyrics do not look lighthearted in the slightest, but it's the way that Tom delivers them and the overall tone of the track that makes it kind of fun. The layers on the instrumental are pretty slick too. I like that little cluster of strings that punctuate the end of his lines during the verses. I just wanna have some fun, get a gun, and go shoot it at the people talking dumb. And in general, I think all the layers, including the drum beat, just complement each other exactly how they should. It's enjoyable enough, a fun little track with a funny contrast between the aggressiveness of the lyrics and the smooth, clean sound that the beat and the singing has. Probably the best track that we've had on here since Icon. I ain't gonna keep this a secret, my marketing genius. The algorithm triggered by exploiting your weakness. And y'all can call me clickbait and gimmicks, I call me rich. So we have finally reached the 19th and final track in Tom McDonald's Gravestones album, and this song annoys me so much. And no, this one doesn't annoy me because it's bad. 
This one annoys me because it blows every other track on here out of the water and shows what Tom is capable of when he isn't so focused on making cringy political two packs of ass. There is passion in his pen here, a fire in his belly. I reached this track and it made every other track that I liked on the album so far pale in comparison because this is one of the few on the album that truly feel like a fleshed out song. Six minutes of Tom McDonald should be a nightmare for me, but instead, it was a wild ride. This has the best fucking flows on the entire album. Sure, we get some grr, angry voice Eminem style flows, which is a bit annoying, but I don't care because the rest of it is so solid. That little build up to the beat dropping in at the start of the track is one of the best segments in the entire album. It builds up the tension perfectly. I'm the rapper that these other rappers jealous of. I made more off CDs than rappers who are selling drugs. True story. Told my manager I'd knock him out and he was like the homie. Then I fired him. If you're watching this, I'm sorry, dog. Au revoir. I'ma die rich while your casket full of broke bones. I ain't gonna respond to all your disses. Look, I get it. Your videos get no views. You say my name and people click it. But my bank account already full. I counted seven digits like, fuck y'all. Attack me with this. Is attract all the critics. I actually think this song is impressive. Do you see how passionately I'm talking about a Tom McDonald song here? He can be a good rapper when he's not too caught up in all the bullshit of playing up to a character to draw in attention. No response is the I'm sorry of Gravestones, but it's like a million times better than that track, honestly. Multiple changes and added layers to the beat as it goes on to keep things interesting with the length of it, ever-changing flows, well put together lyrics that are packed with rhymes that don't sound too convoluted just for the sake of rhyming. The delivery is hit or miss for me, but I just think I don't like it when Tom gets super nasally or it sounds like he's growling but that's something I can look past on here because everything else on it is just so solid. Although I did think it was kind of funny when he said that him and Nova are the only two people involved in making his music and then like a couple lines later he mentions someone else who's involved in creating it that isn't them. That's just a minor thing though, I thought that was kind of funny. It's one that truly has me hooked but at the same time it has me thinking where has this been? Up until this point, I genuinely thought that Tom sounded kind of uninspired throughout the rest of the album. He has two whole songs dedicated to his designer clothes. No response is just a pretty damn good closer for this project. One of the best Tom McDonald songs that's been released and definitely the best track on Gravestones. And what's next gonna be painful? <laughs> Gravestones. So, whew. Now that we're at the end, let's talk about my favourite and least favourite tracks from Tom McDonald's Gravestones album. The strongest tracks this album had to offer were Sellout, The Music Industry, Icon, F.U. and No Response. No prizes for guessing which one of those is my favourite. And then, on the other side, the worst that this project had to offer, People So Stupid, Blame the Rappers, Burning My Designer, Satanic Rappers, Propaganda, and Weirdos, with the worst probably being Weirdos because... I mean, did you hear the snippets that I played for you? People So Stupid is a very close contender for the worst one though, just with how arrogantly it presents its stupidity. I didn't think it could be done, but as I've mentioned a few times throughout this video, Gravestones makes Ghost Stories seem like a bit of a better album in comparison. With the exception of my favourite track, No Response, I don't really feel like any of the other strong tracks on the album have the same punch or entertainment value as tracks like Everybody Hates Me, Bully, Side Effects, I Wish, and I Don't Feel Good had. This album is a step up in how polished the production sounds, Tom is at least always improving in how professional his music sounds. But this album just wasn't enjoyable and I think it might have suffered from the fact that Tom wanted to drop a mixtape along with this album for a total of 35 tracks just one year after his previous album, rather than putting all of that focus into just one project. There was also an issue I mentioned in my Flowers for the Dead review where I said that a lot of the instrumentals on there sounded like Tom produced them by using pretty common preset loops and not editing them all that much, which is something that a few producers in the comments of that video actually agreed with. It was something I started to suspect when his song Fake Fans used the same sample as New Earl Sweatshirt, Culture Vulture used the same sample as Lone Wolf by Convoke, and Famous used the same guitar sample as Sleep by Call Me Correct. 
charisma. And while I guess it's a little bit less noticeable on here because these tracks do have more layered production than Flowers for the Dead, the production is at least more layered on here. I still couldn't help thinking to myself when I heard the opening melodies of a lot of these tracks that they might not be produced by Tom himself and might just be some standard preset loops. I'm not saying that's 100% what they are, again I'm not a producer myself, but it's just the vibe I get from how these instrumentals sound. Um, not as much on gravestones as with Flowers for the Dead, but it's still ideally not what you want people to be thinking of when they hear your production. And so... That brings this chapter of the White Boy Trilogy to a close. I have no clue if I'm ever gonna cover the latest couple of albums that Tom McDonald has just dropped because, like I said, it seems like he's becoming almost like a parody of himself lately, and with a lot of his 2021 tracks, it's so predictable what they're gonna talk about after you've heard a couple of them that it's not even fun to listen to at this point. It's just boring. And at this point, I think I've said what I need to say about Tom McDonald. If I ever feel like talking about him again another day, then you guys will know about it. But for now, we're drawing the CDTV Tom McDonald saga to a close. The war is done. And in my next video, we're gonna be moving our focus over to another resident rap game white boy who might just be worse than Tom McDonald himself for the third and final installment of the white boy trilogy. Stay tuned. Also, once again, another shout out to Karma for sponsoring today's video. This was a long ass video, so I appreciate all the help I can get. Thank you, Karma. Links in the description below.